we're going to show you how you can make a completely naturalistic bioactive ball python setup complete just like this one with a subterranean level a terrestrial level an arboreal level uv lighting two thermostatically controlled heat sources and this is how we do it before we even think about starting this build we have to clear out all the equipment that did actually come with this enclosure we come with a uvb light unit a hammock up in the top corner two heat mats an on off thermostat and some fake plants. We need to do this so the whole enclosure can be bare so we can disinfect the entire enclosure. This enclosure did come from Cheshire Reptile Rescue so we don't know what kind of animals have been in this enclosure in the past. It was donated through to them and then I purchased it from Cheshire Reptile Rescue. That money goes towards keeping the rescue alive so that they can constantly keep rescuing animals Check them out on Facebook. Now we need to get rid of these heat mats because it's not ideal to use secondhand heat mats, especially one that's going to be used as a subterranean heat source within this enclosure. To do this, we've had to unwire the plugs so that we don't need to make any extra holes within the background of the enclosure. But a heat mat won't be the only source of heat within this enclosure. We will be adding in an arboreal heat because we're doing a subterranean level, a terrestrial level and an arboreal level in this five foot enclosure. It's going to be awesome. But we have to remove all five vents that are in the background of this enclosure so that we can get ready to disinfect the entire enclosure. We're going to be using a reptile safe disinfecting, spraying it all over the enclosure, giving it a really good scrub. We do have some uh, decryators down this bottom corner that we need to get up as well. Get it nice and clean, then rinse it with again a spray of cold water just to neutralise everything. And now it's ready to start really working on it. The first point to call while the enclosure is completely empty like this is to seal the enclosure. We've got marine safe silicon and we're going to be running it around all of the edges of this enclosure where moisture could potentially get in. We are going to be having a bit of humidity, some live plants inside this enclosure. So we need to make sure it can be watertight. There will be links in the description to exact marine safe silicon. It's the cheapest one that I've found that does exactly the same job as the most expensive ones. And while that seal is curing, we can start sticking the primary parts, the very first parts of the background piece to the actual back wall of this enclosure. Now we're, our background's gonna be both the sides and the back. So we've got these two inch thick pieces of foam board that have got a, a silver shiny surface to one side. That's gonna help keep the heat within the enclosure and stop the cold from coming into the enclosure. The thermostats won't need to work as hard and nor will the heat lamps or the heat mats. We've cut the boards to size and we're gonna score the silver side of this enclosure. And we're gonna once again use the marine grade silicon and cover that back wall in silicon and stick them into place on the background. We're gonna start with the side panels and then the back panels, leaving them to cure for 24 hours so they're solid before we can start cutting the vents into the background. We use additional pieces of foam to secure it to the background while it is curing so it's not gonna move and not gonna budge anywhere. Now we plan on adding a shelf area that's gonna look naturalistic once it is carved into the cold end of this enclosure. To do this, we've got three pieces of off-cut foam, the same foam we use for the background, we're going to slightly shape them into around about the rough shape that we want and adhere them all together using silicon. We then put it against the area where we actually want it to be on the background and draw around it. This reminds us when we are carving the background not to carve that specific section because that's the section we're going to need to adhere this shelf to the background once the shelf has cured. We do a similar aspect to the central hide that's going to be within this enclosure. It's a big hide, it's going to be adhered to the wooden background of this enclosure. So we need to put it up in place, mark around it so we know which area to actually cut out so that this can be adhered to the wood at the back of the enclosure. We silicon another two pieces into the hot side corner of this enclosure. Again, it, once it's carved, it's just going to add for a lot more depth of field within this enclosure. Now we can start carving the whole background and cutting out the sections we need to cut out. To do this, we've got a big knife and some clay carving tools. Now these tools are only small, so this is gonna take an awful long time. We're gonna try and get into all the little nooks and crannies and just create a primary shape. We can go back over it a bit later to smooth off some of the rough aspects. But that was taking a bit too long for my liking, so instead, we're gonna go power tool wise. We've got a drill, and one of these little rounded edges. This should make the job go an awful lot quicker going around all aspects of the actual full background. You can really use this opportunity to carve in some good texture and depth into the background, create rock structures and do whatever you really want. 
Well, that worked. Please make sure you don't follow in my footsteps and wear the correct face mask, breathing equipment. I'm struggling to breathe right now. Don't do a me. We're going to do exactly the same treatment to the shelf that we did make, except this time we are going to be using breathing equipment for this one. Now you can do this exact same method if you want to add more different depths throughout the enclosure, whether you want to make rocks to go onto the floor of the enclosure, or climbing areas, you can do this with absolutely anything and they come so useful when the animal wants to try and get closer to the UV light to be able to bask. We then create a support for that ledge that we have just made. We want this enclosure to last an awful long time, so it's better to just add one now while we can. Better do it now rather than in a few years time. We then cut out that central piece that we have saved. That's where this central hide is going to adhere to the wooden frame of the actual enclosure. So we need to get that out along with the vents. Now we do have a little trick with the vents. We go around the back of the enclosure and poke a small hole through the centre of the curves that are on the outside of the vents. We go around to the front of the enclosure and grab the actual vent itself and push it in. That gives us an outline to what needs to be cut out for the actual vents. At this point, we need to secure that big main hide into the centre of this enclosure. We need to do it now so that when we do come around to plaster in the background and paint in the background, we can do it right up to the edges of this hide, making it look that little bit more natural. We just have to be careful at that time to not get much on the actual hide. To do this, we're going to be siliconing the back of the hide and securing it in place, propping it up and allowing it to cure for the acquired time. We now have to figure out the placement of where we want the few bits of wood that we do actually have to put into this enclosure. We can be add more, but these are the structural pieces that are just going to be left in here, secured to the enclosure, uh, so that we can add more into it at a later date. We have to keep in mind it has to be where it can be used by the animal, so the animal could either bask on top and bask from the UV. It can hide away if he wants to. He can use it to climb and do some exercise. It has to be placed absolutely perfectly. To place this wood in the enclosure and secure it properly, we have to cut out some small sections of the actual background piece and drill some holes in the middle of them. We then secure them with screws to the actual framework of the enclosure. It's never going to move and it's going to be an integral part of this enclosure. We then need to drill three holes, two down by the left hand vent underneath the vent. These are going to be one for the thermostat probe and one for the heat mat cable because we're going to be having a heat mat on the subterranean level of this enclosure. Another hole further up and this is going to be for the thermostat probe for the above ground heat source that we are going to be using in this enclosure. We then tip the enclosure onto its back. We're going to add a little bit of expanded foam into some of the areas that just look a bit rough. Around the outside of the actual main hide in the middle of the enclosure. It's a bit rough there so we could do with a little bit of foam added into there. And around some of the joins where the wood goes through the foam to the back panel. It's a little bit rough there. Plus we can use the expanded foam to make an extra brace underneath the ledge. Clean up some of the sidings and underneath the foam so the animal can't actually escape up underneath the background and then leave it to cure for the acquired time. With the residue that is left from the expanded foam we have to remove all of the shiny surfaces that's so that the next coat that goes on top of this background will actually adhere to the background. To do this we're going to be using a sharp knife and a razor scraper going over all aspects really clearing it all up making it shaping it making it just absolutely perfect ready and waiting for the next level to go onto it. And now it's time for a bit of heat protection within this enclosure. We are adding some heat in, both arboreal and subterranean heat. So we do need to protect the foam from heat. We don't want a fire hazard. To do this, we're going to be using an external use only plaster. This is the plaster that's used on the outside of your houses to help protect it from all weather conditions. We have to mix it up one part plaster powder to two parts cold water. Really give it a good mix and start spreading it around the entire background of this enclosure. Now you can take the easy way out and add in quite a bit of acrylic paint into this section right now as you're mixing it. That way it will give you a background colour. However, we're going to go one step further this, with this one and we'll move over to that one once this is completed. We have to do the background of this enclosure and the side panels, making the hot side of the enclosure just that little bit thicker. You can mix the thickness of the plaster just by adding a little bit less water into the enclosure. Or you can do it as I'm doing here and add it in layers. Allow it to cure then go over it again with another layer. It's now time to start painting the entire background. For this, you're gonna be using mainly acrylic paints. The acrylic paints are non-toxic and safe to be around animals, so we're gonna be using them. Our base layer, however, the shadow color, 
we're going to be using a masonry waterproof paint. It's one that's used on the outside of houses, it's waterproof and it just helps to help that waterproof aspect towards this enclosure. We have to really get this paint really deep into all the little nooks and crannies, the little crevices of all of this material on the background and all the sides, solely because again, this is the shadow colour. It's black, so it's dark, it's going to be the shadow colour. We are going to be adding lighter colours onto the top with a dry brush effect. This is where we start with the darker colours of browns and greens, dab a little bit of paint onto the brush brush it off so the paint brush is near enough dry just with a bit of paint left on them and then we quickly brush it as quick as we can over the actual whole background leaving little trails of that color of paint on the background between each layer we allow it to dry and eventually over time you'll end up with something that looks like this it can take a while it can take a few layers but it's more naturalistic than what you're going to get with a spray can or a, just a flat color once that's cured, it's time to flip the enclosure back into its upright position. It's time to start working on the complex electric systems that are going into this enclosure. We're going to have UV lighting, an, a subterranean heat source, an arboreal heat source. And at a later date, not today, we're going to be adding in possibly some extra lights towards the daylight basking spotlights. Uh, that'll be at a later date and the reasons why we'll show in a later video if you'd like to see that I'd really appreciate it if you did hit that subscribe button and hey while you're down there Why not hit the like button if you have learned anything on this video so far first items the heating pad This is going to be for the subterranean level. This is the reptile systems brand new heating pad This is the most technologically advanced heating pad that you're going to get on the market today Solely because it builds a hot spot towards the center of the heat mat, slowly cooling as it gets towards the edges of the heat mat. This has been tested in so many different ways. You can see all that over on their social media accounts, Reptile Systems. We push the thermostat probe through the back vent and the heating cable through the back vent. Secure the back vent in, peel the back in off the back of the heating pad and secure it down. This is what makes this side the hot side. It's then time to secure the above ground heat source. We're going to be using an infrared heat projector by Mega Ray. This just produces the best quality infrared rays that we could possibly get for inside an enclosure. That's why I'm using it. We've got a ceramic bulb holder. We're going to be securing this to the ceiling of the enclosure, threading the cables out the back. We're also going to be threading in yet another thermostat probe for this. So we're thermostatically probed on both the heat mat and the above ground heating. That way, there's no matter what, the animal can't overheat. We screw in the infrared heat projector and attach a bulb guard over the top of it. When adding above ground heat for snakes, it's always wise to have a heat guard. While the enclosure is sat here on the table with all the electrics connected and about to be moved into position, it's best now to check the electrics that we have just installed. We want to check the thermostats are working, both knocking on and off. We want to check the heat is actually level across the heat mat and the heat coming from the DP projector, infrared heat projector, is actually working correctly. We want to make sure the UV light actually turns on. We're not too bothered about the actual UVI from this lamp at this point. That's a little bit later when we're setting up the final stages where we can actually put in different lamps to achieve the best UVI for this enclosure. Now live plants are an extremely vital part of a bioactive enclosure solely because they're taking all the carbon dioxide within the enclosure and turn it into oxygen making the air inside the enclosure extremely healthy. For the plants to thrive really well we have to add in a clean up crew which we'll do at the end of the video. They are a microfauna, a load of tiny little bugs, springtails, wood lice, isopods that eat the soil and the leaf litter that's on the substrate and they turn it into fertiliser through their faeces and that fertilises the plants to grow even harder. However, in this enclosure, we're not going to be planting these into the substrate solely because this is the first time this animal's ever had an enclosure like this. And royal pythons, being bull pythons as they are, he may go off his food, he may not adjust to this enclosure very well, so we don't want to add in too much. We want to be able to take them out if we need to. That's a last resort, but what we're going to do, we're going to do it the easy way. We're going to be securing these plant pots into the enclosure and building the substrate layers up around it. That way we don't need to worry about these plants having to root into the substrate layers before adding the snake in. If we do that, the snake's just going to knock these plants over, he's going to dig them out and that'll be that. If we leave them in the plant pots, they'll be a lot more secure for a lot longer. 
now time to start on the substrate layers. This is where we can get quite technical as well. In nature, it's not just one consistency of substrate throughout every single layer. We're going to start with the base layer. That's a cocoa fiber and sand mixture, just like would naturally be in the wild. The deeper layers are always extremely finer, and that's because they've been decomposed over years. We're going to be spreading this throughout the hot side of the enclosure and the back of the enclosure, solely because that's where the deepest substrate is going to be within this setup. We're then going to install the subterranean hide that we're going to be using. Now it is just one of these easy clean hides by Pro Rep that you often see these in rack systems. Well this will be absolutely perfect for a subterranean pitch black hide underneath the substrate solely because it will be pitch black. It's going to be really interesting to see whether the Royal Python that we are using for this enclosure is actually going to use the pitch black hide more than the arboreal space, the terrestrial space or a slightly higher hide. We then get some more fine substrate, cocoa fibre sand mixture, but this time we've added in a little bit of white rotten wood. Now this is so the cleanup crew doesn't have to burrow as deep into the substrate to be able to get hold of some food for them to eat, as well as eating the cotritis that will be in the enclosure. This is going to be pushed and forced behind the back of the subterranean hide, just to ensure that it's extremely secure where it is and it's not going to get moved. Now we have got a small variety of rocks and stones that we have collected over the past few months from outside. We're going to be using these to create an infrared basking spot for the terrestrial level of this enclosure. It also helps to make an entrance for the subterranean hide. For the main bulk of the substrate, we're going to be using ProRep's BioLife Forest Substrate. Now, why are we using this over our own substrate? Quite frankly, our own substrate needs to be misted every single day to keep a good humidity within that substrate. However, this stuff, you can mist it on a Monday and it won't need misting again until the following Monday, keeping a very steady, very stable, high, slightly higher humidity throughout that entire week. It can really hold that humidity for an entire week. That's why we're using it in this enclosure just here. It's also absolutely amazing at sustaining plant growth and for your cleanup crew. It's recommended one bag for a one foot square of your enclosure. We've got a five foot enclosure here, but we've already added substrate and a subterranean hide. So we've chose to go for four bags. All the links to all the products that we have used in this enclosure are going to be linked in the description down below. We install the UV lighting over the hot side of the enclosure, spanning nearly to the cold side of the enclosure finishing about two thirds of the way across. This is solely because in nature, in the wild, the most lightest areas are always the hottest areas. And that's because the sun's hitting those areas. So we like to allow for a bit of a shade area so they can get out of the UV rays, still have some light areas where they can get into the light, but not into the heat and allow the heat and the UV to be penetrated on one side of the enclosure. This just allows for a more naturalistic view. We cover that UV with the Arcadia Light Guard Pro. We then put the last two vents back into the top of the enclosure and get them sealed in nicely. We spray the whole enclosure down with a mite preventative spray. This is the Habistat version, it will be linked in the description just like everything else that's been shown in this video. This is a preventative measure, we have put a lot of stuff into this enclosure that we don't want to bring anything else in. So we just give it this as a preventative measure, we let it air out for around about half an hour. Before we add in the water dish on the cold side of the enclosure, some log stick wood just as a bit of air extra decor, some leaf litter for the cleanup crew to hide in, the cleanup crew which is tropical grey isopods in this instance. Then we drop the glass back into the enclosure and then Charlie, our super pastel yellow belly raw python, to allow him to start showing his naturalistic behaviours inside this naturalistic ball python setup. To see more upgrades on this enclosure that are coming, make sure you do hit that subscribe button, that notification bell just so you get notified when you do upload our next video. Thanks for tuning in, guys. We love you all.